In this video, I want to show you how I tackle med dosage problems using dimensional analysis. Now, this is just one example. I have hours of additional videos and resources at this website mentioned here, and you can find a link to that in the description below. Now, one of the most common things I hear students say when they're working on med dosage problems is they say, I don't know how to start. Well, listen to this. I always start by reading the question first in a med dosage problem. So skipping over all this stuff, I'm looking at this question. What is the infusion rate in milliliters per hour? This allows me to establish a goal. Our goal is to figure out how many milliliters per hour. Now, what can we do with this goal? Our top word needs to be milliliters, and I'm not really worried about hours right now, but we will get there through dimensional analysis. So again, read the question, establish your goal, our goal is milliliters per hour, and with this top word milliliters, this is how I start off my dimensional analysis. I put that word milliliter at the top of my first fraction because that's where it needs to go. We need milliliters at the top. So doggone it, why not start off with milliliters at the top of your first fraction? This is how I start off every med dosage problem using dimensional analysis. Now that we've established this starting point, this is how we start, Look back at your problem and we do see something talking about milliliters. The concentration of this drug is two milligrams per 25 milliliters. Now we do want milliliters at the top, so let's make sure we keep the 25 with the milliliters. We will put the two milligrams at the bottom. And yes, this is totally fine to flip these fractions. I know it says two milligrams per 25 milliliters here, but we want milliliters at the top so we will write 25 milliliters per two milligrams. Now my next step is to get rid of the words that I don't want. We want milliliters per hour. We have to be patient sometimes with this bottom word, but we definitely don't want this milligrams. So to get rid of milligrams at the bottom using dimensional analysis, I'm gonna put milligrams automatically at the top of the next fraction. I didn't even read the problem again. I automatically know I need to get rid of this word milligram, and since it's at the bottom, I'm gonna put it at the top. Now, what do we know about milligrams? Our problem up here mentions nothing else about milligrams, but we do see micrograms. We actually have a weight-based problem here as well. Now, even though this isn't milligrams, but instead micrograms, this is where we need to know our conversions. Watch what I'm gonna write here. One milligram, is 1,000 micrograms. You need to know your conversions. One milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. Now, why did I write it this way? Why did I put the milligrams at the top? We can cancel out with that milligrams at the bottom. And make sure you keep the one with the milligram and the 1,000 with the micrograms because that is the conversion. Now, what was the point of us doing this? We need to get rid of micrograms now, right? We converted to micrograms for a reason. And notice I am writing this at the top. That way we can cancel out the micrograms at the bottom. And we did convert so that we can tie this in. Now let me show you how I handle this weight-based. 0.3 is the micrograms. And with weight-based, I call these the double slash. Whatever two words are in the double slash, in this case, kilograms and minutes, I'm gonna keep those two words together, but they're still two separate words. And I'm gonna put them at the bottom here. So I'm gonna put the kilograms, and technically, yes, it is getting multiplied by minutes, but don't worry about it. All I want you to know is that we keep them together, but they're still two separate words. And let me not forget to cancel out my micrograms. So back to our goal, we want milliliters per hour. We're still not there yet. We need to get rid of kilograms and we need to get rid of minutes because our goal is milliliters per hour. Which one do you get rid of first? It does not matter. I'm gonna get rid of kilograms first. Again, we could get rid of minutes first if we wanted to. So since kilograms is at the bottom, I'm gonna put kilograms at the top. Let's look back at our problem. Do we know anything else about kilograms other than what was already mentioned? We don't, but we see pounds. So guess what? We gotta do a conversion. One kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. 
I'm not doing any calculations outside of my dimensional analysis. I'm just writing down conversions. We're going to calculate everything once we meet our goal. So what have we accomplished here? We can get rid of our kilograms. We still have minutes at the bottom. We have pounds at the bottom. Well, why did we do this conversion with pounds at the bottom? We can tie in the 120 pound patient. Let's put the 120 pounds at the top. I'm gonna put this over one and I'll explain why right here in a second. But why did I put the 120 pounds at the top? The pounds at the top cancels out with the pounds at the bottom. What does this one stand for? This one stands for the one patient. And we don't need to include that word in our dimensional analysis, but I like to show what that one truly represents. Sure, it's more of a placeholder, but the 120 pounds is our one patient. Now we're almost done. Let's look at our goal, milliliters per hour. We're good with the milliliters. That's the only word we have at the top, but we don't have the word hour at the bottom of our dimensional analysis. Well, now we need to get rid of the minutes. And look at this, one more conversion. 60 minutes is equal to one hour. Yes, this is a conversion. 60 minutes is equal to one hour, just like one kilogram is 2.2 pounds, just like 1,000 micrograms is one milligram. These are conversions. Minutes at the bottom cancels out with minutes at the top. I never said they had to be right beside each other. I said you had to have a word at the bottom to cancel out with a word at the top. And now finally, let's look at our goal again, milliliters. That's the only word we have not crossed out at the top. And then hours, that's the only word we have not crossed out at the bottom. Finally, with all of this stuff, we have met the goal of milliliters per hour. We are ready to grab our calculator and we're gonna type all of this in at one time and we're gonna press equals one time. This is how I always do my med dosage problems using dimensional analysis. So what does all this junk equal to? What we do is we multiply all of our top numbers and we're going to divide by all of our bottom numbers. All at one time, we're gonna press equals once. And not only that, these ones like here, 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 this one, this is one kilogram, this is one minute. Anytime we have a one, we don't need to type that in. That's a waste of time. Multiplying by one, dividing by one, doesn't change the value. So skip all of the ones, but let's still multiply the other ones. So I'm gonna start with a 25. Multiply my top numbers, times 0 0.3, times 120, times 60, and now you don't have to press equals if you don't want to. You can immediately start dividing. I'm trying to show you how you can do all of this at once. Yes, I did press divide. We got a two at the bottom. I'm gonna press divide again because there's a 1000 at the bottom. And guess what? I'm going to press divide one more time because there is a 2.2 at the bottom. Finally, I press equals one time. And the answer we get on our calculator 12.27 repeated. Our problem says to round to the nearest tenth. Make sure to pay attention to your particular program's rounding rules. But rounding 12.27 to the nearest tenth, the seven tells that two to go up to a three. Therefore, our answer is going to be 12.3 what? 12.3 milliliters per hour. This is our final answer to this long med dosage problem. And it was long because we had one, two, three conversions, but it has a great flow to it. Once you've met this goal, I cannot stress to you how important that goal is. Read the question, see what you're trying to find. Start off with that top word and exercise a little bit of patience. And eventually we will get to that bottom word. And when you have met that goal, here on the calculator, you multiply all of your top numbers, immediately divide by all of your bottom numbers, and you can get your answer. This is how I do it every single time I do med dosage using dimensional analysis. And again, if you missed it at the beginning, check out this website here for tons of additional videos, additional resources. You can find that link in the description below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.